Just the facts quiz is what that's called. Yeah, that's next week. Okay. Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Thank you, Pat. I'm so glad he's here. Okay. You're like a wellspring of information. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to start with a little pre-calc review, which I know you love. And then uh, we're going to transition from pre-calc into calc when we start taking derivatives of inverse trig functions. Yeah, so we'll review six inverse trig functions. You know, they're on your calculator. You're going to need your calculators, by the way, so while I'm talking, you might want to bust those out. We're going to differentiate those inverse trig functions, because why not? What do you think we're going to do later? Anti-derivative. Anti-derivative of those inverse trig functions. But we got a couple days for that. Enough time for this to sink in. Then. We'll review all the fun derivative things that we've done so far. Because we're pretty much done after this learning new derivative techniques. So there's no other tools for you to use. Okay. Well, there's one other, but that comes later. And it's not that important. And then, of course, today you should be able to list the presidents in order of descending height. Lincoln? Lincoln. Lincoln. Well, with the hat. How, old, how tall was Lincoln? Not how old. How, six, how six, tall? 6'4". Four. Four. Very good. And then you had the hat. How many presidents were over six foot tall? 23. Yeah. Correct Eight. answer is 19. Dang. Nicely done. Can't name any of them, but Lincoln. other than Lincoln, yeah, he was tall. Woodrow Wilson. Obama. Wilson. Yeah. Obama. Trump. Trump. Right there. Well, if we, if we count which, you know, if we can count that. Huh? Why is the sign, let me rephrase my question without just reading that, why is the inverse of the sine function not an inverse function? ways. Kev? Beautiful. Method number one is the horizontal line test. Well done, sir. What's the other method? AC. A. A. Come on, Casey. What? what? No, Casey. Casey is right. Casey. E. E as an elephant? Yeah. Wheel of Fortune, RSTL. Wow. Wow. Casey. That's gotta be an R. R is in raccoon. Yeah. Oh. Casey. Oh. O as in. Oh no way. Orange. Octopus. Casey. You. Me. What? Yeah. As in. I. Casey. Uh, no, uh, 
Let him fail first. T. T. As in turtle? Yeah. A lot of T in Oh, never mind. You're changing your mind, Alex? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, I forgot one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> have we An S as in salamander. Oh, yeah. Now you're gonna that's take the S. Yeah, that's fine. That's cool. Sure. Oh, I'm gonna string theory. String theory is correct. Very good. Yeah. Strictly monotonic. Strictly monotonic. Strictly monotonic. I was gonna. I'm gonna do that. You're supposed to say. Yeah, you're supposed to say. I like the song. I actually didn't realize how difficult of a hangman game that was. You know, no A. No, 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 I just like to mention that R, S, T, L, N, N were all in. No yeah. way, you guessed like the most common letters. Those are the most that's common letters. That's why you guessed them. That's why you guessed them. That's it. But I thought I'd make a fun. It was his game. Not every game. He can play however he wants. Hey. Yeah, we're good. Some people are playing with If he wants to collect $200 when he lands on jail, he can. Even though that's against the rules. Hey, we're cool. Okay, there you go. go. Good. That's how you go to that. Yeah. Casey, what does that mean? Uh, it's, it's strictly monotonic. <laughs> Thank you for that clarification. How does that help answer the question that uh, Kevin so astutely answered earlier? It, the uh, function only goes positive or negative. Which would then mean that it would pass a horizontal line test and we're back to Kevin again. Yes. Okay, good. So why doesn't the sine function have an inverse function? That's going to work really well on the audio there, John. Could you clarify this a little bit? I think that it speaks for itself. Okay. It goes up and down at not a certain amount of time. Good. How can we solve that problem? Uh, let's see. Mr. Shane, good job. So what we do is we cheat and we restrict it to uh, certain domains when we start talking about inverse functions. And so we get that big scary thing. And I know you've done this before, but you've probably forgotten about it because it is fairly horrific. So let's talk about sine first. Um, hold on, before we talk about sine, you do know the term arc sine, right? Did you use that in pre-calc? So you just did sine to the negative one? Don't confuse people. Okay. Arc sine is the same thing as the inverse sine function. And so it can be written that way or it can be written this way. It's not a reciprocal, it's an inverse function. Yes, sir? Uh, it's entirely up to you. I'll take you through it and give you some hints on how you can use this. but. Um, it's entirely up to you. What is that thing? Do you know what page is turning on? Oh, page 375. I know the name of the slide. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. It's on uh, page 373. Thank you. Uh-huh. No problem. Okay, because if you visualize what the sine function looks like, it oscillates up and down doesn't pass the horizontal line test. So we're going to say, hold on, I'm going to chop off most of the sine function and restrict it to just a certain domain. And in this case, we're going to go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Now, a couple things are happening here. First of all, we're no longer going 0 to 2 pi all the way around. If we go in the negative direction, they become negative values. So if you picture the unit circle now, you would normally go counterclockwise 0 to pi over 2 to pi 3 pi over 2, and back to 2 pi. However, this time, if you start at 0 and you go up, they're positive angle values. If you go from 0 down, they're negative angle values. This is a fancy way of saying we're in quadrants 1 and 4. When you're trying to recall which quadrants functions are restricted to, you'll notice that every one of those has at least quadrant 1 on it. That's the one we want. No pun intended. Then... The second one, well, hold on, let's back up. What's true about all six trig functions in the first quadrant? They're positive. 
The second choice is going to be whichever quadrant gives you a negative value. And then we start to fit the puzzle pieces together. The fact that, notice none of them have quadrant three as a choice. Quadrant three is a bad spot. All of them have quadrant one. All of them, ha or none of them have quadrant three. So for instance, you're taking a quiz. You're trying to remember what quadrant sign is restricted to. You know it has to be in quadrant one. That's the positive sign value. And now we need a negative sign value. Since quadrant three is eliminated, that means in order to get my other quadrant for sign, I have to come down here to quadrant four because that's where the sign is negative. Or just memorize all this. It's entirely up to you. It does get a little tricky with the tangent, cosecant, all that other fun stuff. Okay. Tangent, for instance, which is the third one down, we could go with one and two, or one and four, the decision, however, somebody made the decision to stay with four. Cam? So why, why did they switch the hard code tangent? I don't really know. I don't know the history of why they, there's probably some bizarre trig theorem function thing in Java that explains why you don't have them being the same. Because they could be the same. Yeah, because tangent is positive. Tangent, for instance, is positive here. It's negative in these two. You can pick either one. Okay. Why they went with four, I don't know. And then you get to the cotangent, which is here. You would think they would go with the same yeah. thing as tangent. But they don't. But they don't. Jerks. But I mean, for tangent, it, it's not that you're going to have the same value either way because it's just a slope, right? Not always. Because you'll get different values. Question? Um. So we're, is, uh, when you say that like uh, quadrant three would be a bad choice, is that because there'd be a gap in the domain when you're like writing out? The no, it's just the standard that they've chosen. Okay. Yeah, because um, some functions are positive, some fu functions are negative. They just choose to eliminate all the confusion by staying away from quadrant three okay. and then arguing about two and four. Okay. Um, okay. So other than that, we're good to go. These things in the domain, I think you knew, all sign values have to be between one and negative one. Tangent values can be anything. And again, if you think of the graph of the sine function, it's got uh, an, an oscillation there that oscillates between negative one and one. That would be the range of the sine function. But again, we're talking about the inverse sine function. So remember those two switch. The domain of a sine function is negative infinity to infinity. The range is negative one to one. However, when you take the inverse, they switch spots. That's why the domain goes from negative one to one. That's why these are also infinity. Okay. That's a dot. Question. Oh, that's a great question. Did they stutter when they typed? What does IFF stand for? If and only if. That's a fancy way of saying it's reversible. So if you say something like, uh, if an animal is a golden retriever, then it's a dog. If you switch that, it's not true. If an animal is a dog, then it's a golden retriever. Could be a schnauzer. Could be a shih tzu. Could be, you know. If the statement is reversible, though, if I'm married, then I have a spouse. If I have a spouse, then I'm married. Those are reversible, and you can shorten that by using if and only. The same way as saying you can switch this around. Good catch, though. I didn't even notice that. Unit circle practice. Woo! Yay. Yay. Woohoo! <laughs> you don't know the unit circle inside out, forwards, and back. You're going to need to learn it. Okay. And we did a lot of problems, or you did a lot of problems in the past where you would get multiple answers depending on how many times you went around the unit circle. This is not going to happen. We should get one and only one answer. So for instance, where on the unit circle is the sine equal to negative one half, which is what I'm asking when I'm asking for an inverse function. So normally, when we first start trig, 
you would ask a question like, what is the sine of pi over 3? And then you would regurgitate the value at that coordinate. Now I'm giving you the coordinate. I want to know where that happens. What quadrant is this in? 4. Why? Perfect. Sine is restricted to quadrants 1 and 4. That's a negative answer. Therefore, we must be in the fourth quadrant. And I don't know how you do this. I don't know if some of you are memorizers or some of you have a strategy. Uh, I know how I do it. I draw a pitiful circle first. Okay, there's my unit circle. I know I'm in quadrant 4. And I know that the three values I'm going to get down there are negative 1 half, negative 1 over the square root of 2, and negative square root of 3 over 2. And I know that they, those are the values of those, um, the, the, what am I trying to say? Why That's the value in ascending order. So it goes from 1 half to 1 over the square root of 2, 2 square root of 3 over 2. So therefore, since I'm looking for negative 1 half, I'm looking for a small y value. Is that small y value going to happen there, there, or there? Which means it's going to happen there. Um, isn't the second of those runs, isn't it? Square root of 2 over 2. It's the same thing. Oh, yeah, you're right. Good. I'm glad. No, I think Otherwise, I've wasted my entire it. career. i got to find a new job. Walmart reader, I think, would be great for me. <laughs> Look good in blue. Hi, welcome to Walmart. Can I help you find something? They keep us in for life. What are you looking for? Cereal? Cereal is in aisle 22 to begin the front. Sugary stuff on this side, healthy stuff in the back. Okay, no problem. Have a great day. You too. I should get it faster than I don't have any put like buttons all over and stuff. Anyways, up until now, we would give a value of 11 pi over 6, but we're not doing that anymore because this is positive, this is negative, so my answer is. Negative pi over 6. Hot diggity. The rest continues. Negative pi over 6. I got that one right. Where's the cosine equal to 0? Pi over 2? Or? No, not negative. Negative pi over two. Negative, negative pi over two. Which one? Uh, Both. 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 Two answers. Why? Not. Oh wait. Two answers. No answers. <laughs> are they in one and three? But are they in one and three? No. Okay. Good. Safe answer. Now, the reason why it's pi over 2 is if we go backwards. Oh, we're doing cosine, aren't we? Yeah. Tangent of square root of 3 over 2. Sorry, square root of 3. Uh, how to handle the tangents and the arc tangents? The thing that I do, which I might confuse people, but I'll give it to you anyway. The square root of 3 over 2 is the same thing as, I keep saying that. And the reason I keep saying it is I think of it this way. Those are equivalent statements, right? Because there's no coordinates on the unit circle that have a value of the square root of 3, there are coordinates that have the square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. I know that the square root of 3 is the square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half. The top is the sine, the bottom is the cosine. And again, if that's purely confusing, then do whatever method you, you need to use to get pi over 3. First quadrant, because it's positive. Calculator. Do it. 
because that's not on the unit circle, and anytime it's not on the unit circle, that would be an indication that you use your calculator. And you get 0 0.305. Anybody get something different? It's above the sign button. Sign to the negative one. If you don't get 0 0.305, check to see what mode your calculator is in. If you're in degrees, you will not get that as an answer. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, are we, are we basically never using degrees again? Uh, I don't like to use words like never and always, but mostly radians. A good chunk, 99.9% .9 of the time we're in radians. Why do they teach us? Well, I guess they teach us degrees because that's actually kind of understandable when you're young, right? Is that what they wait to teach you? No, it's because of different. It's like why do they, why do they teach you um, imperial measurements, but then throw me, um, metric at you? Yeah. Different schools use different measuring techniques. You know, honestly, feet inches doesn't make any sense to anyone. So why would we even use that? Yeah. Uh, there was a guy. That's what we do in America. Because we don't have, we don't have enough. Money there was a guy. Who was like, Truer words have never been no, spoken. No, he was gonna teach us the, or make us do the other things. But then he was kidnapped by pirates. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, are we trying to switch to Imperial? Yeah. Okay, is that a joke that I don't? No, it's, it's true. Yeah. I, I kind there of. There was a guy. Was, there was a guy that what that wanted to do what now? Like. Way back when, like when the U.S. was still like, like back in seventy two, like when pirates were still around. Yeah, back oh, okay. And then he was like in a lobby that the U.S. used that from Europe, but then he was kidnapped by pirates on his way. So we never learned it. Interesting. I, I've never heard that before. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking. Where did you figure that? I did not hear that. We were gonna learn. Yeah. 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 You're making that up, aren't you? No, I'm not. Look at that. So on his way to America to convince everyone to use metric system. Pirates took it. Yeah. Pirates took him. Yeah. <laughs> now, interesting enough, when the pirates either let him go or killed him, were they using the metric system? Yeah. Yeah. They like walked three meters off the blank. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> now things get a little bit more interesting. <coughs> Let's start doing some composite stuff, huh? Oh, nice. Yeah, it's going to be nice. You would think. <laughs> you would think that arc sine and sine cancel each other out. You would think that arc tangent and tangent cancel each other out, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Sometimes they do. Other times they don't. So for instance, the arc sine of the sine of 3 pi over 4 does not cancel itself out. You got to do a little bit more work. Here's a nice rule of thumb. They will cancel each other out if that value is in the first block. Okay, so that's pi over six, pi over four, uh, pi over three. Then you're good to go. Anything else, you gotta grind that out. And we'll talk about how to do that in a second. Casey. What about pi over two? Ooh, what about pi over two? So what's the sine of pi over two? Uh, one. one, and what's the arc sine of one? Most of the time, those cardinal values, that's what those are called, that 0 pi over 2 pi and 3 pi over 2, those cardinal values will cancel each other out. Okay. okay, so what's that? What quadrant are we in? First. First, therefore? They can't work. What quadrant are we in? Four. Not the first. Question? But isn't it still in the domain of the uh, cosine? Mm -hmm. What's the cosine of negative pi over 4? Root 2 over 2 or 1 over the square. Quick survey how many people are square root of 2 over 2 people? I assume the rest of you are one over the square root of two. Anybody optional, flexible, if you will? Yeah, you. 
Huh? You're okay with either one? Mr. Troyer was really big on rational. Yeah, but Troyer's gone. That's what we got to do. He just put the pattern on Put him out to pasture. Maybe that's why he's gone. It's because he was a big group two over two guy, so they're just like, we're, we're moving on to the one over two. That's right. Time to replace you, old man. They throw him on the field. Two people went out. Only one came back. Your message is outdated, Troyer. <laughs> Let's say 1 over the square root of 2. So where is the cosine equal to 1 over the square root of 2? We get bumped back into the first quadrant, which would be pi over 4. There are no sneaky tricks here. Meaning, like, I'm not trying to imply that you just get rid of the minus sign. That doesn't happen. You, you have to actually do the work here and figure out what this is first, the inside chunk is, and then apply the outside. Uh oh! What's wrong with this problem? Not on the unit circle. Once I show you this, it's going to come flooding back to you in a in a experience of mathematical bliss. There is some angle that when we take the cotangent of that angle, we get two thirds. So let's draw a picture. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah you remember this, right? Yeah. <laughs> Again, there is some angle, which I happen to call theta, that when I take the cotangent of theta, I get two thirds. And if you'll recall from your right triangle trig in freshman year, cot I don't know, we didn't do cotan. Never mind. You'll recall from your uh, from your vast stories of right triangle trig that cotangent is adjacent over opposite. Drew my little picture there. What chunk of information am I missing? You just got to get an egg. Um, but you didn't answer my question. What are we missing? What are we missing from that triangle? The angle of the other side. No. Nope. Hypotenuse. How long is the hypotenuse? <laughs> How much? Square root of 13. If this is the square root of 13 here, then what's the cosecant? of that triangle. Cosecant is a reciprocal of sine. The sine of that angle is 3 over root 3 to 13, so the cosecant would be root 13 over 3. Once you get the triangle in this case, I can ask you about any six of them. Sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, cosecant, secant. So just for giggles, what's the, if I change the cosecant to a cotangent, hmm. what's that equal to? Two thirds. Yeah, two thirds. Cancels itself out. And you can do sine, cosine, all of those. If the value that you're working with is not on the unit circle, you're drawing a triangle. Is that what we said? Yeah. Oh boy. What? Certain. Is X on the unit circle? Could be. Could it not be? Yeah. Do you know for yes. sure it is? No. So therefore? It's not. Let's it assume is. that it's not. Kind of assume? Also. also. Okay. And x can be written the same way as x over 1. Yes? Mm -hmm. So we get that triangle. Oh. Don't put your whining. <laughs> now the fun part. How long is that?
Everybody hear that? Say it loud, say it proud, Brian. Uh, the root of 1 minus x squared. And where did you get that from? Just setting up the equation in my head. Which equation? Oh, that there you go. Okay. Solving Pythagorean theorem. Good. This here is that. So therefore, what's the cosine of that? Let's see what's the cosine of that triangle, of this angle theta, sorry. Over one, if you'd like, but we're all big people here. We know that that's not okay. Well done. Good job. Solve equations. Still pre calc review, by the way. How do you get rid of an arc tangent? No, you can't do that. That violates the rules of algebra. Side. That also violates the rules. Kev, slide that ruler down here, would you? Jeez, I need to defend myself. <laughs> You're on the right track, Cam. Can't just take the tangent of one side of an equation. Both sides. Both sides. Uh, I, I, I thought that's, that was clear. Oh. I thought that was clear. Hold on. Did anybody else pick up on his, what he was trying to imply? No, he no, was not. No, he was not. Clear. I thought it was <laughs> Because it cancels out the arc tangent. You're right, and that's why we have to take the tangent of both sides, but that's not what you said. Okay. So what happens when we take the tangent of both sides? What's the tangent of pi over 4? One. One. Tangent of the arc tangent cancels. Question, Sam. How do you know it's in quadrant 1? Didn't you say only can't be in quadrant 1? Correct. Uh, we don't necessarily know that it would be in tangent, in, in tangent, in quadrant one. So a couple things can happen. Number one, you can assume that when you're solving an equation. Or number two, they may give you in the directions of domain restrictions to guarantee that this is a doable situation. So it's not doable? If it's, the problem is not solvable if this is not doable. Is it safe to assume you can all solve this? No. I hope so. Okay, that's all right. I'll help you. <laughs> so it's not a cancer. So it is. Two is not a cancer. So it is. So it's not a cancer. Excellent debate skills. So it is. Just negate anything he says. I'm happy today. No, you're not. No, no, I am. No, you're not. Okay, we're done with pre-calc. I'm going to start. I'm going to start by apologizing. Okay. This is not fun. But it's math. What's the matter? Are you still catching up? No. We can wait. I don't even. No, no one's okay. <laughs> I don't. Get I had it. the feeling this almost turned into a therapy session. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, we were one second away from doing here. The last student doesn't make sense. No, this one. It's fair. It's fair. I'll take uh, that. <laughs> it's gonna be okay, Olivia. <laughs> no, it's not really. <laughs> See? Oh, 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 yes. What is this? You squared? What is this? Go back to first semester. Take two. Patrick. What page is this? You bet. I'm gonna guess 375. Why can't, can't it just be you? I don't like you. It can be, but that's wrong. Okay, now. Yeah, that's a good one. Unfortunately, this is something you need to know for maybe one problem on the AP test. So we can forget it? And you don't know which one it's going to be. And you don't know which one it's going to be, correct? So I would like to tell you that this isn't important, just forget about it. But. You'll start to realize as we continue uh, through this AP preparation type thing 
that one problem can make a difference between a four and a five. And so it doesn't hurt to learn this material given the fact that it might show up and you might have to do this. Do you have a question? I have a confirmation on page number 376. Ooh! Did you say five? 376. 376, off by one. Off by one only counts. No, I, I said 375. Yes. I heard 365. Okay, so as you solve these problems, number one, you need to realize you're doing an arc sine, arc cosine, you're doing an inverse function. Okay, that's going to be pretty evident in the problem. Number two, you're taking a derivative because we'll do integrals later. Number three, you have to remember each of the formulas. I'm going to show you where one of them comes from. This is not an easy derivation. And it's not something. There's been other things that I've said, well, just go memorize this. Or here's the derivation. Maybe you can use that. Yeah, you're not going to use this. You're just going to memorize these things. I'm not a big fan of that. But at some point, you just have to realize it's easier to slap that on a note card or a flash card and, and memorize it. And there are some that pop up more frequently. Arc sine, arc cosine are used quite a bit. You will get into some of the weird ones down here with the arc secant and the arc cosecant. I think I'm on four weird things. The fourth thing is, how do you use it? Okay, so we need to find u. Then once you find u, that's the hard part. Once you find u and you know the formula, then it becomes plug and chug. The last part is the easy part, but getting to that is rough. Okay, so let's talk about this first. I'll show you where the formula comes from, which will give you an idea of where the, all these formulas come from, and then uh, we'll move on from there with some examples. So we start with that. I have an inverse function I'd like to take the derivative of. What was that? The phone fell out. Oh, I thought somebody threw something in the garbage. A phone just leaped out of the trunk. Yeah. There's a ghost. That would be great if there were such things. Whoever's phone it is, they should check it. You know, maybe it's decide. That it's possessed? No, maybe they have an important message. It could have been vibrated out. No, there were no vibrations. Yeah. 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 Okay. So anyways, um, here's my formula, or here's my triangle. Where did that triangle come from? So the assumption is that we're on a unit circle. So the radius is 1. The y value is? I'm oh, sorry, the, uh, the angle is y, because we're taking the sine of an angle, and we get a, a value of x. And then we do the same thing Brennan did and find that other side. Okay, so that's the setup. Now we want to take the derivative implicitly. What? Um, I just have a question. Does That's why you had your hand in the air. Uh, yeah. does, does sine have the, the derivative of sine negative 1? Does that have any correlation to the cosecant? Or does sine look more like cosine and cosecant looks more like secant? Are you talking theoretically or formula-wise? Formula-wise. Well, you saw the formulas, right? Yeah. You wrote them all down, didn't yeah, you? I, yeah, I did. Yeah, oh. Can you answer your own question? Because mm. honestly, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, so there's, so there's just no off. It's I don't have a memorized correlation there. Implicitly differentiated. The derivative of sine of y is cosine of y chained on with the derivative of y. So you call that a y prime if you like, dy dx, same thing. Derivative of x is 1. Done. <coughs> Solve for the derivative. Uses a triangle and shazam, we're done. Big jumps there. Are you with me? Took the derivative implicitly. Shouldn't be difficult. Solve for the derivative because that's what we're looking for. In other words, just like we do in the other problems, get all that other gunk on the other side. Cosine of y doesn't do anything any good to help me, so then I fall back on the triangle and say, OK, well, wait a second. If the cosine of y, we know that. That's this. So then plug and chug in for cosine of y, and we get that. That's in terms of x. What if it's in terms of y? Or sorry, in terms of u? If it's in terms of u, then you have to just stick a u prime 
up on top. Okay, the chain rule. So again, when you get to an inverse trig function, you're not going to do this every time because you can't remember the formula. You're just going to get to know the formula through practice and then you're good to go. Then the difficulty becomes identifying the U-term. If you get the right U, the rest of this is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Sometimes it's real simple. Not much else you can choose for you. And so since there's not much else you can choose for you, then you need to take the derivative of u, the derivative of 2x is 2, and you plug and chug into the formula. And the formula for arc sine, the derivative of arc sine, is u prime over the square root of 1 minus u squared. Notice the whole thing is squared too. It's not 2x squared, it's the quantity 2x squared. With derivatives, it's not too hard to identify the u value. When we start doing integrals in a couple days, that's going to be the biggest challenge. So if you practice it with this, the rest of the integral stuff will be easy. Arctangent, u prime over 1 plus u squared. And again, there's enough subtle differences in those six formulas to drive you insane. Okay. Sine has a square root in it. Tangent is the exact same, arctangent is the exact same formula no square root. Oh wait, let's make things more interesting. Let's change the minus into a plus. Just as you thought you had a grasp on it, rug gets taken out from underneath you. You can leave it like this if you'd like, or if you're feeling saucy, you could square a 3x and get 9x squared. It gets a little uglier. Still follows the same format we used up here. Here's u, the square root of x. This stuff on top is all u prime. The bottom is still the square root of 1 minus u squared. Since u is the square root of x, when you square it, you get x. I don't know if I cleaned this one up or not. I did. There you go. Mm -hmm. Chewbacca. Found a Chewbacca there. Yeah, nice. yeah. <laughs> Somebody sent me a video about uh, 10 things that sound like Chewbacca, and they're just like a desk being slid on the floor, a paper towel, automatic paper towel, towel dispenser. I forget what the other things are. But they all sound like, uh, you know, some delinquent punk, I don't know. Oh, definitely, yeah, this is not needed. That's just me showing off a little bit there. I can bring this, I can bring the X underneath if I so choose. Ooh, look at that. We got trig. We got inverses. We got E's. We got X's. We got a headache. We're crying. And we're quitting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. At some point, you got to be held accountable for this. <laughs> Varying degrees of sim uh, simplifying. Is this good enough? No. Well, I mean, not really, because you if nothing else, you can cancel that. Is this good enough? Uh, no, not really, because you still haven't canceled that. All you've done is square e to the 2x, which is e to the 4x. And remember, power raised to a power you add, or you multiply the exponent. So yeah, in this case, you probably want to take this all the way down to there. This one, uh, you don't need to do the whole single square root thing. You can leave it as 2 times the square root of x times the quantity square root of 1 minus x. Okay. Oh, yeah, um, never mind. I'll get it here. This is it. Pat, this is on page 378. No problem. These are all the derivative techniques we've used so far. So for instance, 
What is number three also known as? Dennis, what is number three also known as? Good. Dennis, what is... <laughs> What is number six also known as? Oh, the, the, the anti derivatives. No, these are derivatives. Oh. Oh, it's just chain rule. Good. Good. I thought that was the one that we did like two days ago. Are you sure? Number six. Well, there's another page. Hold on. Do I need to go back? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here's the non-trig stuff. That's all you got. That's all you got. <laughs> all the non-trig stuff. And some of this stuff isn't even worth your time because you already have it burned into your brain. So for instance, number one, let's just take it a derivative times a constant. The derivative of 2x is 2 times the derivative of x. Number two, derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. You know that already. That allows you to take the derivative of x squared plus 3x minus 7. Three, product rule. Four, quotient rule. rule. Five, constant. constant rule. Six, we already did. Chain rule. Seven, stupid. Eight, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't really talked about eight yet, have we? No. Because usually when we take the derivative of an absolute value, we either flip stuff over or add the matrix. Yes, sir. Hold on one second. We'll get the pirates in a second. Nine, 10, 11, and 12 are stuff we've done in the last couple days. There's all your trig stuff. What lights in the way? Go to your digital book and take a screenshot. The Olympics are coming! Alright, I'm the only one excited. I'm excited. You know, they're bringing the torch over the Olympics. It's 